Good evening. I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Joplin Schools Board of Education to order. Uh, roll call, please, Ms. Waldo. Mrs. Sharp? Present. Mr. Steele? Present. Mr. Landis? Present. Ms. Dicklin? Here. Mr. Kimbrough is absent. Mr. Wilkinson? Mr. Flowers? Here. At this time, we'd like to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Mike Landis is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> no district showcase? Yeah. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Yeah. So move. Second. Mr. Steele, Mr. Was that the oh. You're looking the wrong direction again, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Please vote. Yes. Please. Yes. What was that? I'm sorry. Approval of, Approval of agenda. Okay. Thank you. Um, I did have a question. Do we need to remove the one item for Project Lead the Way? Is that what you did next meeting? No, we're going to approve it tonight, but we're going to okay. explain yeah. more. Okay. So I had a yes and a yes. Oh. Yes. 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 Superintendent report. Okay, well, I look forward to next month when we have district showcase again. I'm missing the kids. Um, superintendent's report, uh, first item on the agenda is Project Lead the Way, and uh, we're going to visit with you a little bit about a, uh, an exciting opportunity that's come our way um, here recently that uh, we want to share with you that uh, very much in alignment with the vision of Joplin High School and FTC. So I'm going to turn over to Dr. Bessendorfer to visit with you about that. You know, Project Lead the Way is a, is a great program that we have looked at historically. I mean, I remember as, as as much as my first year in the district so several years ago looking at how can we make this happen and the price tag was something that wasn't a possibility at that time and the great news is is that things have evolved in their program as well as in our program and then additionally we have a grant from Bemis for $35,000 over three years to help make this happen and it, it came late in the ball game to us and so tonight on the consent agenda you'll have an an item that that asks you to approve a course and we're going to begin the program of the implementation of project lead the way it's a program that you may have heard about Carthage School District actually has it and has had some really great success with it and so we we've, we've been able to to capitalize on on things that we know from from that but we're just starting we're going to begin with the principles of engineering class and just so you know, Mike Gurley is going to be teaching that. And I had hoped that he would be here tonight and that Dave Rockers could be here tonight and Carrie Sicetta to explain those things. And, and Mike is actually in Wichita in the two weeks of training. So this was late that we found out about it and we said, can you make this happen? And he did. And so kudos to him for being there and, and, and making this happen. And then Dave is also at a, at a conference for, for, his, for his degree you know in his area and so they're going to come next month and tell you more about it but I just wanted you to know a little bit about what was coming why we're bringing a late course addition to the Joplin High School program of study and and what's going on but it's something that is a very positive step in the right direction which school districts are using this um, I know that Carthage is I'm not sure what other what other school districts have it I I know that there are many school districts that have it there are some great benefits to the kids on it in relationship to college credit after the fact through RALA through this. It's, it's a very high quality program that has been around for a while that we're excited next year will actually be all online and so that's going to make things a lot um, better for us with our one-to-one -one situation. So. Thanks. Sounds exciting. I, I think we'll find that kids find it exciting. Thank you very much. And next uh, item on the agenda, uh, summer school report. And I think uh, Mr. Cravens is here to update us on how summer school went this year. And I uh, tried to get some principals to, to be here to talk about summer school, but they're all on vacation. So we do have uh, fortunate to have a summer school teacher auditing the board meeting. So uh, she's in the back row. Uh, Janelle did an excellent job. Word from the street was summer school was smooth in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was a good, good year uh, all around. Um, we had uh, 245 students in kindergarten, 580 in the elementary overall. Uh, we had uh, 
1,506 students, that's including wow. special education. Um, 220 in middle school, or middle school numbers were a little lower this year, and then high school was at 450 students. Um, some highlights, we had 50 classes passed in the flex, which is 25 credits. We had 153 classes passed 9 through 12, and all those equal uh, half credits every time we pass class. And then at the 3 through 5th grade, uh, read 180, we had 75 <coughs> kids who had 100% participation in that program over wow. summer, which is celebration for uh, summer school to get their 100%. And then finally, um, there was a fencing demonstration at the middle school, and uh, <laughs> really? I, I'm told was. that the kids think they can take the demonstrator, and they want a rematch, <laughs> is what I was told earlier. So uh, I'm not sure how, how that will work. But Fencing uh, means a whole lot. A completely different thing to me than it does Jay Jason. I grew up on a farm. That, that has a whole different thing. <laughs> so you can take it as fencing? Absolutely. And we argued about it yeah. for a long time until I realized he was talking about some kind of pointy, pointy thing you stick yeah. people with. And he was talking about barbed wire. And I'm like, it's pointy just, things. Yeah. Get hurt, you can hurt, get hurt both ways. And you can, and I have been. And then, of course, celebration of nine, nine graduates uh, yeah, this summer. Awesome. Nine, oh. nine students yeah. were able to finish their credits and graduate. So uh, it was a good summer school. We appreciate the teachers and principals' hard work and uh, celebrate that it was a good season for it. Very good. Any questions for Jason? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, construction updates. A lot of exciting things happening in the construction world right now in, in the Joplin ways. schools. So, Archie, appreciate you coming this evening sure. to share with us. Sure. Well, I, I for one, although I like watching the uh, district showcase, it's it's a lot better when I don't have to follow them because it's always <laughs> a tough one to follow. But we'd agree. <laughs> But uh, uh, starting with Irving Elementary, uh, we've had a lot of progress on all the on all the job sites over the past month. Uh, but in particular at Irving, uh, Midwest Drywall has uh, uh, been very busy over there. They've completed all the drywall work on the uh, second through fifth grade uh, classrooms, and they've got uh, about half of the drywall work completed in the common space, and are getting ready to start uh, drywall work in the K1 uh, wing. Uh, Bills and Allens and Gold, all the MEP trades, uh, they all continue to work on their overhead and uh, wall rough in work. Uh, they're staying out in front of the drywall guys is really all that all that we ask, and uh, they're doing an outstanding job of What's that. What's the duration on the drywall? Just curious. Uh, when will they finish that? Is it until they finish it? Mm -hmm. I would expect that we'll have all the drywall hung uh, by the end of next month, and they should be close to taping out the, the balance of the space. So maybe two weeks into, let's see, two weeks into September, we should have all the drywall taped out. Very good. Uh, commercial glass has completed about 95% of the, the windows in the two-story uh, classroom. So if you've been over there, I think there's only three left that, that they're still working on. So that's, that's helping us out tremendously. Uh, Saratoga uh, today was actually finishing up, uh, with the exception of the FEMA 406 room, has all the spaces in the dry now. So um, that's helping us tremendously as, as far as putting the finishes in and making sure that they're, they're taken care of. Walker Masonry is substantially complete with their exterior masonry work on the site, just cleaning up a few last little details on that and getting them out of the out of the way so that we can go ahead and work on curbs and asphalt paving and those things. Now that they're big, heavy lulls and other equipment aren't going to be running around the outside of the building any longer. Uh, new trade on site this month, Yackel Painting has got in and started work in the uh, second through fifth. Did I pronounce that wrong? Yeah. I don't no, know if you did or didn't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I met, I never met heard one of the gentleman the other day, and he was sporting an Eagles, Eagle Pride uh, uh, T-shirt that uh, uh, from uh, back when we went to um, um, Arrowhead Stadium, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, one of the local um, T-shirt suppliers here, you know, print print shops had a, had a bunch of those that were, I guess, left over, and they were in a rag bin, and he got a bunch of rags on the bottom of them. There were a whole bunch of Eagle Eagle Pride shirts, and his whole his whole team sporting those. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, the painters uh, have have started work on uh, both floors of the two story. Uh, classroom wing. They've got, uh, I guess, what I would call the field colors. They haven't started with the accent colors uh, yet, but some of the neutral colors have, have been uh, applied. Uh, also, if you uh, go up to the 
the second level, they've uh, put the blue dry fall paint on the on the ceiling, which is actually going to emulate the uh, the under the sea theme that they've got going on on there. So you can kind of start to visualize what that's going to look like. And then last but not least, Joplin Floor Design uh, has moved on to site also, and they've started ceramic tile work. So now we've got a couple of bathrooms that have ceramic tile work on that, and they'll be working their way out into the hallways so that we can start to see more what the finishes are going to look like. Over the next month, uh, in addition to the drywall work uh, that we talked about, um, we should see the painting complete in the two-story classroom as well as the ceiling grid uh, get installed so the MEP guys can start dropping light fixtures and uh, ceiling diffusers into the space. Um, we expect all of the uh, uh, casework potentially to start showing up for the second uh, second through fifth grade classrooms, which would be exciting. And we should also see uh, curbs being installed around the, I guess I'll call it the back of the building. I get directionally confused. I guess it would be the uh, east side of, of the campus, and we're going to work our way around from the east. Any questions on Irving? Okay. Still on schedule? Huh? Still? Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, they're, uh, uh, we're, we're still hoping to finish a little early there, and everything seems to be tracking well. Um, East Middle School and Soaring Heights Elementary. Uh, Midwest Drywall has got a number of guys working on that site as, as well. They've finished about 90% of our drywall work in uh, the East Middle School uh, area, and they've taped about 50% of that out. They've just got some loose ends they're dropping back and finishing up so that we can get the painters started over there as well. Uh, they're also working, uh, working hard over in Soaring Heights. If you've been over there, we've got about half of the drywall framing up, and the uh, MEP guys are following right behind them and getting electrical and plumbing into the walls. Uh, Sellers and Marquez, who's the window uh, installer, has started installing windows along the west side of the building, and they'll continue to chase the masons around the back of the building and start getting that closed in. Uh, Walker Masonry has completed about 95% of the masonry on East Middle School, and they've started work on Soaring Heights uh, Elementary now. They're working on the front and uh, actually should be adding another crew so that they can work both sides of the elementary uh, at the same time to, to wrap it up a little quicker. Over the course of the next month, we, uh, we should see the painters show up and also ceiling grid guys in uh, East Middle School, which will really make that place start to take shape. Um, we'll also see, um, you know, a feature uh, that'll I think is going to be neat to look at. They're going to start building all of the clouds for the auditorium on the ground, and then start swinging those up into place. So by next month, we should see those, uh, if not in place, at least built on site and getting ready to to hang. It did remind me one thing uh, that at Irving that we should see here over the next two weeks that I think will be a, a fun thing to, to watch is the glass guys are supposed to have our film out for the eagle that's going to go on the, uh, uh, the glass clear story area. So you'll start to see some of that branding tape sh taking shape, which will be uh, nice over the main entry. When's that? Um, should be within the next two weeks. Okay. Questions on East Middle School? Like the walking track. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. Got some of that in. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Franklin High School. Not Franklin High School. Joplin High School, Franklin <laughs> Tech Center. A uh, lot busy. Uh, more superstructure uh, going on. We've uh, uh, seen a significant increase in the amount of red iron that's on the site since, uh, since last month. Uh, HME has completed the framing for the east half of Area C, which is the Arts and Communications Wing. They also completed all of the framing this, this past month for, for Area B, and uh, they completed the steel framing for the west half of Area E, which is part of the bioscience area. Um, over the course of the next month, uh, they'll start to fall back on actually setting, uh, setting the red iron and working more on the detail work which will allow us to get more elevated slabs poured and get more structural studs going up around the perimeter. So they're going to be very busy over the next month uh, making that happen for us. Uh, Branco has been very busy as well. Um, they did complete all the elevated slabs in area D, which is our very center core, so that we could start uh, our metal stud framing, which if you've, if you've been by, you see that PCI is a new sub that's out there for us now, and they've started with both the exterior stud framing and they've also started with some of the interior stud framing down on the first floor um, so we'll start to really see the uh, the building getting closed here over the over the next month 
Uh, Branco is also uh, continuing to work in Area A uh, where we can. They're working on uh, working on walls and working on footings that um, we don't need micro piles for, so that we can get that area as far ahead as as possible until we can get the micro piles, uh, all the design worked out, and get those guys mobilized and out to the site. Uh, we've also jumped them ahead, and uh, they've started on the auxiliary gym a couple months earlier than what we planned, just to try to take <coughs> advantage of their crews while they're available uh, to get some more space done. Uh, Emory SAP just continues to work on uh, the package for site utility work that they were working on last month. Uh, other trades, uh, another trade that's new to the site, Gold Mechanical, who's also working over at East Middle School, has started putting duct work up in Area D. Uh, on the lower level and they've got a lot of their hangers up so as you drive by you'll start to see uh, you know more of the interior building components uh, hanging from the structure which which is always exciting uh, last yeah. kind of couple things uh, of significance uh, as you know we've been uh, trying to get some stuff worked out with micro piles guys and uh, Branco did hire Hayward Baker to do our micro piles earlier this month um, and they're going to be working on those in areas A, G, H and K. Um, they're working closely with the design team and, and with us and the, and the rest of the contractors to hopefully be on site by August the 19th. And uh, so we'll keep working with them to get them out, out to the job site so that our footings can continue in those areas. And then I guess last but not least, uh, as you know, we've been working on uh, VE with the architects and with the, uh, with the district staff. Uh, to date, I think we've came up with about 1.8 million in VE options that What's VE? Uh, value engineering. Thank you. As far as looking at, uh, uh, looking at ways that maybe we can you know, save, save some money and, and return it to the project budget to, you know, to help pay for, pay for construction. So I think we've got about 1.8 that we've directed the contractors on and we're continuing to research other options and we'll bring those forward before the team and uh, any of them that we think have strong merit then we'll make recommendations on those as well. Questions on the high school or Franklin Tech? The at East, is it the gymnasium that's the safe room and then an auditorium and storing Is there two there? There's, yes, there's two, okay, there's two safe rooms. I was walking through yesterday, uh, Mr. Landis and I, and I got confused. Yeah, the the gym the gym is the gym is one of the safe rooms, and then um, we've got uh, some. I can't remember the exact purposes of the room. It's not. It's it's off of uh, off of the gym. We've got the uh, uh, the community the community or the building. I get them flip flopped. But we've got about three other classrooms or mm -hmm. not classrooms, but building spaces that have a hardened lid on it that okay. serve as another safe room. And then, Dr. Mestorf, will you be taking the a tour for the East folks and the Soaring Heights folks? We will, as soon as the architects and, and for the Irving folks, as far as well, the, the Irving folks went through. The, just the design, just the team that was okay. making decisions. And so we want the whole the whole school to get to do that. And I think that that one may actually be scheduled for it the is. Irving staff. Okay. It is. Yeah. Um, I think that's the 12th of August. But we want to get the design teams through for East and Soaring Heights, but we want to wait until they can feel enough of all the spaces that they can get they a can't feel for visually see it now. Huh? Yeah. What, the, yeah, they can't. Make sure they can't. They can totally on, on the elementary side. They, they need to be able to, to feel that differently, exactly. so it makes it worthwhile. Have walls up. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would think you're probably about a, a month out probably on east from being able to do that because they should have the rest of the walls framed in and so we can kind of walk them through the space and explain to them. Okay. And it's exciting. exciting. Just something it's to look so much to. fun to see them yeah. to take their ideas that they were telling the architects and, and to see that real in, the, in their school to be. It's, it's so much fun to see their faces and to see that their yeah. ideas really are what shaped this school. Any other, anything else, Archie? Any other questions uh, for anybody? I don't um, have any sure, questions. Sure, okay. would like that eagle shirt to be huh? worn. Sure, would like that eagle shirt to be worn. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at the construction I, report at the board meeting. I don't know. Okay, I will. I will. I will wear it next month. I'm sorry. Mike, do you have anything for us on uh, safe rooms? Thanks, Archie. Yep. Thanks, Archie. Yep. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Well, the safe rooms are progressing. We're starting, we've got all the construction fences up. The building permits are in place on uh, the five first safe rooms, which are Eastmoreland, McKinley, Cecil Floyd, Stapleton, 
and junk. Uh, at Stapleton, we've torn up the front drive. We're trying to get that part completed uh, prior to school starting. We're working internally on all five or on the four schools I mentioned. Uh, uh, all of them are getting some sort of work on the inside that's that's going on. Uh, we're installing carpet, redoing offices, and things of that nature. Um, we're relocating utilities and getting ready, to clearing the spaces so the bulldozers can can uh, run uh, and actually start uh, preparing the pads on the on all of the sites. Uh, we've ordered all of the. Uh, we're in the process of going through submittals and shop drawings and approval process for uh, all of the uh, precast concrete, which will be constructed off-site, and we expect the first uh, safe room to be delivered in right about three months now, and then every two weeks we'll receive another one. So uh, that that works on going. We're putting the finishing touches on the next batch of four. Uh, we hope to have those uh, bid documents on the street in the next two weeks. Um, uh, and that will include uh, Royal Heights, Jefferson, uh, what else am I forgetting, uh, Kelsey Norman, everything but West Central and Columbia. There's one I'm missing there. Oh, did I say Jefferson? I did. At any rate, uh, we'll have everything but West Central and Columbia on the street hopefully in two weeks. Uh, those were are behind the others because of the historical review that took forever. But uh, it had to be done as part of the grant process. Uh, so that's basically where we are. You're going to start seeing a lot more activity on the sites with actually heavy construction start in the next few weeks. So um, we'll have to have to have the sites ready for the for the precast when it shows up, and then we'll we'll be off and running. Most of the work going on right now is inside the schools. Once the precast shows up, how long uh, does it take typically to get those those in place? On, they'll, on they're they're scheduling two weeks for full, for erection time on each one of them. That's why they're staggered two weeks because the crews will just go from Not one finished, side just to the erected. next. Mm -hmm. The same company got all four. Okay, uh, that makes it easier. Is, uh, is the thing. I, they were low bid, so mm -hmm. that's that's who we took, and they're very competent. Very good. Any news or anything changing at the Emerson building? Yes, I met with the National Guard uh, there for the fifth or sixth time uh, this week. Uh, we're working to get that building demolished as a training exercise with the 203rd here uh, in, out of the hmm. Joplin Armory. And they're very interested in it. Uh, it's very intensive on the paperwork and the uh, authorizations and everything. They sent a crew down and they're doing a feasibility study to see if they even think that, that their equipment can handle the job. And we went through a lot of technical questions. They, inspected the building so we hope to have an answer in a week if the project is feasible so that's that's where we are on that we're um, I'm starting to work on the uh, documents to abate the asbestos in the school it has to be done regardless if the guard demolishes or if we hire a contractor so so that I'm beginning that process uh, now so we'll have that work completed and the building will be sitting ready for uh, us to either bid it out to a contractor or let the National Guard do it. I was at a meeting uh, in, I believe, January or February and ran into General Danner, who was, who was over the Missouri National Guard, and we had a conversation. He asked if there was anything that, that the Guard could do for Joplin schools at this point in time, and, and one thing led to another, and he'd mentioned the possibility of doing some demo work for us if we had any left, and uh, we've just kind of been having those conversations every, ever since, so it's been a, um, could be a unique, uh, unique partnership to, to see that come together. They would do it as a, what they call AT or summer training. They're two weeks in the summer, and they're talking about the logistics. They can, don't think they can do it in two weeks, so they would stagger groups. Uh, so they, they, they're anticipating five to six weeks possibly uh, at first glance. I, I'm sure that will be revised as they get deeply, more deeply into it, but uh, they're, they're talking about staggering it uh, so that they can complete the project over a summer. That's good to move. Yeah. I'd like to hear that. Yeah. It, is there any way we could – fence off that playground so that the kids in that neighborhood would have green space because when I was jogging by there yesterday if we just put a temporary fence behind the school there's you know, all sort I mean it's I, been mowed it looks really nice but sure. there's no way to get, I get saw in. kids trying to go up and over the fence well let me let me talk to Kent about that and that was another I had a conversation with Randy the other day and actually sent an email to Kent um, this morning about the possibility of because we've got a couple of different lots that are getting used as play fields right. by kids Fields anyway in the neighborhoods yeah. and, and yeah. seeing what we can do for those demoed lots to, to slick them up a little bit maybe this fall and 
and um, and if that's even possible yeah. to, to get it to where, where kids and families can play on it because they're using it anyway and, and uh, we're mowing them right. uh, so we just will make those assets to those parts of the community until we figure out uh, what's next for those uh, pieces of property so I'll, I'll take a look at that in the morning yeah because there is no way to get into it I mean yeah. I used to go to West Central when we played football and they still has playground equipment there mm, no? I didn't see playground, I see. playground no playground just equipment. green space okay, okay just green just, space just, but so that's what, you can play soccer or that's football that's what I was telling CJ that I went by South one day and there was a whole bunch of the old South property and there was also a whole bunch of yeah. kids up in the neighborhood playing on the property and neighbors brought their lawn chairs out to mothers and watched their yeah. kids playing on the so might as well use them yeah thank you Mike thanks cool. Thank you. And that's all I have for superintendent update. All right. Um, as far as board report, we have um, the Missouri School Board Association annual training or meeting is October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th for any of you that would like to go. And um, that's always a good training and, and uh, a lot of good information. And I believe it's also for the school attorneys I'll be there. and Secretary. the Secretary. board secretaries and administration is that correct that's correct mm -hmm. are we present will we be presenting uh, you know that's a good question I know it seems I get uh, I don't think we did we submit any this year okay, okay. All, right. all right so we get to enjoy it this year all right sounds like plan no new shirts Angie. miss follow any public comments yes, no public comments. Uh, so then I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. We need to uh, pull Kathy Rivers off the MRI. Can step out for that one for employment. Can we oh. just do it with uh, abstentions as noted? For just that? Just, just for, for her. He should step out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to step is, out. Okay. Is it in the consent, the whole consent package? Well, we have employments in there, but I don't know yes. what the employments it are. Is in, no, it's not. Is it's it here. Clear? Yeah, it's a closed session. Very good. Yes. And we'll talk so we can handle that later. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. So I'll once again entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Ms. Sharp, Mr. Steele. Look, uh, any discussion? Yeah, I had a couple of discussion things. Um, on can we kind of talk about the lunch increase price? Is that Mr. Barr or Mr. Mr. Cravens or, or <laughs> whoever it might be. I was looking for Mr. Kinkle, but I did not see him. I'm representing him. Oh. Good job. Man. You're good. Poor thing. So, yeah, yeah on the lunch prices, and I'm, I'm the first to not like lunch prices because it hits me four times. <laughs> 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 but, uh, and, and we had the same thing last year. This is the third increase in 15 years. So it actually has not increased. It's been stable for a long time. And then uh, there's a federal mandate that says that the paid lunch prices should be coming closer to what USDA reimburses us for free lunches. So uh, that's the reason for the increase. We're trying to show a good faith effort towards meeting that mandate. I did talk to Rick. I'm like, hey, okay. so what do we expect? He's like, well, I'm hoping next year not to be able to, you know, to not increase. So, okay. so really we're just trying to do a good faith effort towards the federal mandate that so that's we're being forced to do this yeah it's okay. the paid lunch <laughs> equity uh, and they're just trying to create a, a more okay. more fairness between what we reimburse versus what we charge okay for the paid. Right. and then any other questions about the lunch increase what, what's it going to a dollar 40 it's going to it's uh, 10 cents for the elementary 15 for secondary so a uh, dollar 90 at the high school 175 for middle school and 160 for the middle school or elementary only. that's still, still cheap, cheap lunch. <laughs> lunch any other questions about school lunches well I won't go there but <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, You're going to ask what's what's for dinner on the first? Is the he wants to know when the noodles, chicken and noodles, turkey and noodles. <laughs> 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 I used to have have him send me an email on that. One. Yeah, <laughs> you know. the school menu. Uh, and yeah. then on the Stapleton iPad Lab and Stapleton Laptop Lab. You have is, behind. Uh, is there anything? She's coming to the table. She's coming to talk to you. All right. Okay, we, I'm really excited about both of those labs uh, because they're coming from that school saying that they want more technology. The iPad lab is a request from the principal using Title I funds to purchase 
uh, the iPads to use with kids. Um, it will help with information literacy. They can use it in addition to any devices that they might already have in um, existing classrooms. And then the laptop cart is a request from teachers because we have our students going into the library for their uh, their time that they have with the library media specialist and she has a situation where every kid is on a computer but she's in there all day tie and it ties up those uh, computers so the other classrooms can't have them so they have asked if there was any way that we could provide more so that way there would be more access and so it was something that uh, we looked into and we were we planned for it and uh, were able to provide them for them this year. Now on the MacBook Air, those don't take the CD drive, right? They do not. Okay, so they won't be like the other library cards that we've had in the past, those white thick things. They, yeah, they will be the same kind of computers that you're using yeah. right now, oh. which actually um, Mac does not make those white ones anymore. Okay. So, yeah. And But the iPads are for everybody in the, it's not um, class grade. It's not for a particular classroom, okay. and both are to be shared for the entire building. Okay, and then the Apple TV purchases, that's probably mm -hmm. you. That's, mm -hmm. that's that little gadget that sits in front. That's not a television set, right? Correct. Okay. So okay. Uh, the Apple TVs are, you're right, it's a very small little gadget about like this, and it connects to projectors and LCD panels with an HDMI ca cable. Uh, the great thing about them is that it's a new technology that allows us to use iPads or if we're using our very latest operating system on our computers so that we can mirror what is happening on that device. So let's say that I've got a group of 30 students and they all have the iPads out. One student over here does something m remarkable on their iPad and I want to display that for everyone. I've got two options. I can have all the kids parade through or we can pass the iPad around or I can mirror it to the Apple TV. Now the kids have an example of you know what they need to be working on or if it's a great bit of information that everybody needs then we've just shared that information with all of the kids. They can do that with the if they're running the latest operating system on their laptops also. Eventually if we get to the point where we can have a media server then we can store videos and we just you know little short instructional video clips and we can use the Apple TVs to stream that down to the students. And are these going to be district wide or we're just piloting them? Or? Well um, the ones that are going to board tonight are for East Middle School and Soaring Heights in all classrooms we put we put that in and then any place where there is an LCD panel in a learning park we're putting that in. Um, Something that is not on um, the board agenda, but another place where we have put uh, the Apple TVs are in those eighth grade classrooms. Kids are going to have iPads, so that way they can do the exact same thing in their classrooms. And that's this year, right? Yes. Every eighth grader will have an iPad this, this year, 2014 15 year. Mm -hmm. But is the Apple TV an actual television, or is it just, it's just a, a little, it's just it's just a little, little device? It's about this big. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like a wireless converter. Box. Yeah, I so guess you could look at it as a converter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It works through the iPhone too, doesn't it? Uh, an iPod Touch also, oh, yes. Touch. And uh, w there was a teacher that was using it last year. Uh, she had a one-to-one -one situation with iPod Touches and just did a great job of having kids use it just as I explained by mirroring it so that way they could share information. It, it worked great. Does it also give your TV internet capability? Yes. Uh, well, yes, it does yes. because the Apple TV connects to the internet, mm -hmm. and so um, it would be. It's like our projector would have internet capability if it weren't hooked up to the laptop. So then they could also go on and do further research if they, if that was. It something. doesn't have a browser. Okay. But yeah, it does have apps, okay. but it's they're limited apps. Okay. Now, will they have printer accessibility on any of the stuff that they need on any of these? On the laptops at Stapleton, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Anything cool. else? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. So I had a motion and a second. Please vote. Yes. 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 I failed to mention how riveting Mr. Barr's tax abatement presentation mm -hmm. was. You're probably getting ready to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Oh. All right.
just do that again. <laughs> One done. One done. So we are on the regular agenda, and I believe we are going to Mr. Ball <coughs> to the accounts payable. Thank you, President Flowers. The uh, attached bill list items are for payment of materials, equipment, services, salaries, and benefits in both instructional and support areas. The administration recommends that the board approve payment of bills in the amount of $10,377,463.15. So move. Second. That's Mr. Landis and Mr. Steele. Any discussion? A lot, a lot of money. construction <laughs> monies in there. A lot, a lot of construction monies in there. Okay. Anything else? Please vote. Yes. 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 Thank you. Discussion items. August board meetings, August 27th. That's all I have. Um, open houses and where are the kids. I've been asked where, when they get their schedules because on the website it says open house is August 20th. But school starts the 15th. So, how do you like middle school, secondary folks get their schedules? That is the middle school open house date, I believe. But elementaries are different. Right, but it's all if after school starts. Elementary is the 13th. And the middle school is after school starts when they'll have their open house. I just been asked how they get their schedules. Do they just show up August 15th and? In high school, they'll send out. I mean, there's. I mean, in the past, they send out information to pick up schedules for freshmen and okay. sophomores. I mean, they'll. Yeah, our, our staff returns. Yeah. Uh, is it, is it uh, when is it next? Uh, next week. So, um, you know that information. We, we've got a new website too, and we're really excited about that. And it's going to have better information on it. And we just launched it in July, uh, July one, and um, and that information is going to be forthcoming as the staff that's been trained on that come back on, con under contract, start working again, and uh, and uh, get that. Okay. all that information updated so w the okay. websites are great they're going to be a great place to go for information okay. much improved and then we'll let the Joplin Globe know absolutely yeah that would be awesome and <coughs> just people um, there's free physicals out there if you're planning on doing a sport this year watch the paper or watch the website so you can get the physicals for those and um, that's all. Just school starts August 15th Kids come back <coughs> in just a few short weeks I think three weeks from this Thursday is that right <laughs> From my mother. The most wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> Love day. Opening day. Opening day, Thir August uh, 13th, 13th, I believe, is the date. We'll have opening day kickoff, and uh, looking forward to getting faculty and staff uh, back together. And, and uh, we'll have invitations um, uh, for that event going out in the very near future. We've never had media there. At opening day? Yeah, we have. Oh, yeah, we have. I thought we had. We, we always, we always uh, ask the public to be cognizant of the buses rolling again after the school opens. So School's the kids will be hopefully adhering to crosswalks, but some of them are, have to kind of relearn from summer off. So. And speaking of media, they always do a really good job of uh, putting out some PSAs and information about, about, uh, about that and reminding motorists to watch out. Kids are back on the streets again, coming to school, riding bikes. and getting on buses and all those things. And since Kim's not coming up for Bright Futures, I'll remind everyone there's buses everywhere to stuff the buses for mm -hmm. school supplies. Great program. We're doing that in cooperation with which districts? Is it just Carl and Webb? Uh, Carl. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion items? No. Anyone? I'll make a motion we go back into closed session. Second. Ms. Sharp, Mr. Landis, any discussion? Please vote. Yes. 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 yes.